So what's the first gotcha question that we oftentimes see posed by atheists? Number one, since evolution has been scientifically proven, doesn't that disprove the Bible? I want to share with you something that you may find quite interesting. It's, it's rarely talked about, and I really don't know why, because it's, it's amazingly fascinating. It's called Haldane's Dilemma. So no, Haldane was not some sort of Christian who was out to try to disprove evolution. He was an evolutionist, but one day Haldane began to think, and he discovered that there was this sort of dilemma in connection with evolution. Reverend Jim Jones, remember Reverend Jim Jones, responsible for 900 deaths back in 1976? That reverend was an atheist. This is what he said. He told the FBI, my bishop knows I'm an atheist. He must have spent $20,000 traveling around hoping to get my denomination to remove me because I was so atheistic. Then there were the atheists of Stalin, Vladimir Lenin, Pol Pot, Mayo, who were responsible for more than 100 million deaths under communism. And that's because if there's no God, there's no ultimate right or wrong. So anything goes. Another very common argument or reason for atheism is this. What is truth? What is it? That which conforms to reality is what the dictionary says. I like to say, that which conforms to the mind of God. Whatever God has said is correct is true. Everybody else, get in line. If God says it, that settles it whether you believe it or not. God said it, that settles it. Well, why is this so important? How many lies do you think you've told? Ever stolen something? Ever used God's name in vain? Ever looked with lust? Ever hated somebody? Sir, you've just admitted to me, I'm not judging, but you've just told me you're a lying thief, a blasphemer, an adulterer at heart. You're a hate, you've hated someone, you're a murderer at heart, and God's going to bring that to judgment on the day of judgment. What are you going to do? And suddenly he sees his need of God's mercy, and the cross begins to make sense. So how do I, how do I approach a stranger? I often get asked that. Well, this is how I approach a stranger. This is very deep, so please take note. If I, I see a stranger, someone I don't know, this is how I make my approach. A number of years ago, I remember picking up a copy of Time magazine and flipping through its pages. And as I was doing that, two words jumped off the pages and quickly caught my attention. The first word was Bill, and the second word was Gates. And I had enough sense to know that those two words added together equal tens of billions of dollars. And so I was captivated. The article was about the $100 million mansion that Mr. Gates was erecting off of Lake Washington. And being a gadget freak, I was intrigued by the amazing gadgetry that was going into this home. I was reading about all the amazing amenities, the, the private beach, the servants' quarters, the wonderful workout facilities, the underground parking structures that could house 50 automobiles, the technology in there. You could put this little pin on your lapel, and wherever you walk, the temperature changes to your desired temperature in every room. The color changes in the room with the lighting to whatever you desire. The music plays uh, in accordance with your favorite genre of music. But the thing that blew my mind was when I read about a specific item that Mr. Gates was having placed in the library of his new palatial home. We are created in the image of God. And you are created for a reason. And you need not shy away when an atheist, an agnostic, a free-thinking skeptic comes your way and wants to challenge you. When I was all done, there was a, a gentleman, a lineman that came up to me and he said, you know, the Bible is filled with mistakes. 